Hey guys. All right, today I'm gonna to show you five things, and this is a five-year-old tank that are really important, that in my 25 years of reef keeping experience, everything is extremely healthy in here, have kept my tanks the way they are. Obviously, I didn't have much room to work with. First one is consistent weekly water changes. So let's take a look at why. All right, here's my 20 gallon. This is a five year old tank. It started out in a 10 gallon with all these corals being one tenth the size of what they are right now. And the reason for the success in this tank was water change. I don't do 50%, but I do about 20% weekly in here. And this is an extremely healthy, vibrant, growing tank. I actually had to remove some of my SPS. This is Pasolipora because my GSP was growing over it. So I took those pieces off and I put them over here on this live rock that I attached with magnets to the glass. This leather coral, if I did not make fragments from it over the last several years, it would probably be larger than this entire tank. So I've had to cut that back many times. The second one in your first year, you should test for nitrate and phosphate, DKH and calcium weekly. Testing weekly is also really important, guys, especially with a new tank. All right, this is my five gallon LPS dominated tank. Everything is extremely healthy in here. This, I do not miss a water change of 50% weekly. In order for you to grow LPS like this, you need to have a fair amount of calcium, at least 420. So how do I know how much of that do I have in there unless I test weekly? It's a good idea to test maybe the day after that you do your water change. And then sometimes the day before to see if it's going down at all. The key part about water change is to eliminate nitrate and phosphate if you can and add calcium and alkalinity. Number three, be prepared and go into your tank and remove any hair algae or unwanted algae manually as best you can. If you're going to use some kind of treatment, you will remove it, but in time it'll come back. Don't be like me the last several months trying on a new tank to use fluconazole or some of the other treatments. I have some hair algae here you can see. This was all gone when I was doing the treatment, now it's back. I also have the bubble algae, but I'm not gonna resort to any kind of chemical treatment. I'm going to see if I can get it to go away manually. Yes, the fluconazole did get rid of my hair algae in my 10 gallon, but I'm seeing areas where it's coming back. So that's why I'm switching back to my old method, the old natural way, lots of water change and manually removing it. Sure if we're on four or five, well, if we go to five or six, whatever. The next one, educate yourself, guys. I'm glad you're here. This is the place to be to get solid information. So you're on the right track, but I would say educate yourself. I can tell by some of the questions I get that you're using me as the first tier of information. Don't start a reef tank without knowing what you're doing a little bit. And have a plan. Know what kind of a reef tank you're going to have. Is it going to be a mixed reef, LPS dominated, or is it gonna be SPS? It's important to know that because it's important to know what's involved to maintain those kinds of tanks. Soft coral only is very easy to keep. Mixed reef gets a little harder. SPS is even more difficult. So you need to know what you're going to do 
before you get involved. So have a plan. Keep your hands out of the tank as much as possible. Just this morning when I put my blade in to clean the glass off before the video, whatever happened, my star polyp, my Australian leather, several of my corals suddenly retracted and closed up. Was there something on my blade or did my hand touch it? Keep your hands out of your tank. What else does my 25 years of experience tell me that's important? Guys, reef tanks are really easy. You know, I hear all the tales of woe that people are having and I don't quite understand it. They're very easy to keep if you follow some basic rules, which I'm giving you here. I think the big thing is education. They're, they're getting information from all over the place or they're trying to go into it without any education at all. And you need to, you need to educate yourself. It's a science. That's why I laugh that they call it a hobby. This isn't a hobby, guys. This is science. I have no clue how long this video is gonna be today. I just did what I did. So I hope you got something from it, especially new viewers. I know you guys that have been watching me for a while, you always get something out of my videos. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.